Today, or yesterday actually, according to Pranav's lovely Gantt chart, marks the start of structure's detailed design, which means that everything on this plane should be completely thought out and in a CAD model by the end of the month. That's the goal. Each team kind of has a short breakdown of everything you need to think of. It's probably not entirely complete, um, but it's a great starting point for now. Keep a running list of like all the parts you um, are putting on to the plane and I'll try to make a big master um, weight and center of gravity spreadsheet to make sure that our plane can actually fly. How many of you actually know how to perform FEA? Because you guys are going to be doing a lot of design work um, throughout the next month until the 1st of December. 1st of December is an important date because that's our own internal PDR or preliminary design review. You need to have an end goal, which we'll try to define with each and every team today as to what that looks like. And that has to be completed by the 1st of December, essentially. The entire fuselage and tail and nose is all one piece that's long enough to fit inside the box right now. Okay. Um, if they change like the length of the plane, then yeah, that's going to be detachable. But I don't see them doing, I, I, what I see them doing is taking the vertical stabilizer off right. if they make that even higher yeah. and somehow being a diagonal, but. Do you want to see this, Ken? This is a thin layup of carbon fiber with not much epoxy added to it. The idea of this was to make a fuselage all on one board and then fold it into place. So this was proof of concept that you could fold carbon fiber after it was cured. I personally think if you were going to go with the folding idea, you would want to cure it after you folded it and got it into shape uh, because you wouldn't want your fuselage bendy. So This is not super strong in anything. Maybe well, compression. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a lot of force on the, the corner. But then again, if we cure it that way, um, if we, we can cure, try and cure it post that, the bagging of that would be horrible. It is a full structural member. I right, mean, but it, it can't be connected from face to face. It's just one, they're all individual faces if it's folding. Well, if it's in this folding configuration, yes. Right. But let's say you were doing your conventional mold and then you're sticking the carbon in with uh, filler material. Yeah, it would be continuous all the way through, even on the right. corners. No, but yeah. for the folding fuselage specifically, now this, the, these inner plates aren't doing much, so we could remove them entirely. No, no, no. You can remove them from the corners. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things is the thickness. But you can remove them from the corners, but it still has to be there in the rest of the structure. Would be easier because it um, eliminates the molding and, then, and all of that. You could do a layup with like this in, in a few but hours. But that's but just as easy as doing like the... Here's another issue I have with that. Now imagine you've like laid it up straight, right? Your carbon is like... No, it is epoxy flat. Now, if you want to bend it after the fact, you're basically putting internal stresses into the entire structure. Your structure is in, remember Dr. Yang's thing, self-stress? So the, the point of how we would normally do it is imagine that there was a U-shaped mold. You place the car and assume that this was not there, right? Like the fat of the foam. We just put this in there and now we and bag vacuum all over mode, it. Right. Exactly. And then lay out the foam and then yeah. another layout on the wet carbon or dry carbon layout by epoxy. Exactly. So that's how we would go. the negative mode which you go. Yeah. yeah. So but yeah, a negative mold. Yeah. But for yeah. that, when you two pieces of a mold. Yeah. So the thing is, now if we try to approach it with just this and no mold, um, and you cure you if you try to cure after it's not going to hold shape under a vacuum, right? Because you need some mold structure to keep it in shape. Oh, so I thought it was unidirectional. Unidirectional, yeah. That uh, is that just like a tape? Is that what they were saying? Like uh, unidirectional tape? There is unidirectional tapes, but I don't think we have enough of that to do that. So we just have like a unidirectional. Okay, yeah. So either way, something unidirectional we're going to use. We do need to revisit the design of the wings bar because we have that three degree oh, pitch. Okay. How are we tackling that three degree pitch uh, in the wing from the base to the wing tip? Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any sorts of ideas about it? Yeah. I don't know. I was just going to think, because kind of running with the idea, we could make it, instead of trying to fill it out to completely like the top and bottom ends of the uh, 
of the airfoil. We could make it a little smaller just so that it would fit within that 3D degree turn without bumping into any of the constraints. Hot wire cut it to that, right? Or are we going to cut yeah. the pieces to that first? Okay, that is what yeah. I want that to do. I can, yeah, we, yeah, can, we can put a 3 degree pitch yeah. in it through that's the hot doable. wire cutter. That's easily. easy. Yeah. yeah. Just get Kenneth to like would make throw in an open VSP model, like get this fixed to fast. Just be like, all right, put 3 degree on, put no 3 degree. Let's even throw it in Jake's simulator and try flying it. All right. The theoretical advantage is that let's just say that when it's banking hard, you still are maintaining lift on the extreme edges to a greater degree than the rest of the wing, which might help, but maybe in our scale it subtracts 10 milliseconds or something. We want to have an option potentially where we are, like when we're storing the wings, we like completely fold the control surface, it's like on top of the wing for storage. The wing is like the full core length and we'd have to like increase the wing core length size and like add the like little hinge up and stuff. So let, let me get this straight. We're only talking about control surfaces now, right? Not like folding the wing in half? No, no. it's just control. We okay. could, we could figure out a way to remove the leading edge and like put the leading edge in too. Here's the thing, for the ground mission, we're not, it's not like we're like completely like surrounding the wing and like fixing each of the end. We're having a flat plate where the wing goes up and bolts it in two places. Oh, And what? then we're applying load because we have to secure with those two fasteners. In that case, we're not, we're not applying, the load is almost entirely going through the wing's bar. It's not necessarily entirely going through the like leading edge or the, or the trailing edge mm -hmm. for the control surface. Yeah. Meaning making the like leading edge removable is not necessarily like going to like impact our structural like our ground mission test like structural does. Well it won't impact the ground mission but it'll impact the rest of the mission like actual flight. Yeah but like that's loading. much less than we'd actually are in the sea. Oh, yeah. also, I'm just realizing. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a good idea. I'm realizing too is one of the reasons why you would want um, this design though is to also reduce wing uh, issues like going this way too. And if it's on the spar, then you can't actually do cuts to make it like a full kind of on every single side. You'd only have the top and the bottom. You wouldn't like the thing could sort of slide off if you're not careful. Um, we. I don't think we're having loading in that air, uh, in okay. that direction well, specifically. So at maximum, and this is the outer outside dimension of our box. So I'm gonna use these numbers, but really it's a little bit smaller than those. So right now, the maximum length our wings can be, or any one part of our uh, of our plane can be, is 36 inches. Our, if we lay our wings, our wings are gonna be the longest part of our plane. If we lay the wings so that they go like this, um, down this direction, that means the um, base, this dimension here of our wing can at maximum be 13 inches. So if we are able to cut off the tip of this, now, this can be 13 inches. Uh, we'll go through a couple of uh, updates really quick from Aero. We'll finish everything on this Aero side with that discussion and then we'll go to the updates for the rest of the other sub teams. It seemed like I've got the wind tunnel fully full worked out. Um, it's the only thing is to swap between aerodynamics and propulsion, we're going to need to get a grad student in all the cargo himself to change the wind tunnel out. Okay, so that's going to slow things down a bit. We also have time for the next Wednesday, so. Yeah. More days. So, so, yeah. More wiggle room. Oh, they did a, a like. Yeah. No. She said it was no problem. I mean, she also spent all her time until Wednesday, of thing, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Not saying we need to take all that time, but we've got it. Uh, but roughly, we're looking at like 130 square inches. Um, the one I think on the um, the model is I think 140, which is within the range. Um, and yeah, I've got some other numbers in case we decide to increase the length, but it's not too bad. Okay. Um, and then upcoming is we're going to work on trying to size the rudder and accurate for... We have like rough numbers on how much force we have to compensate for the antenna. So just figure out how big of a rudder we need to make up for that. Cool. So I think that will ultimately end up going to the nose, tail and empennage team on the structure side of things because uh, those guys need, yeah, essentially that size to design the structural elements. And I think what happens to your role after that is you effectively merge with that group. You help them from the aero perspective and you can contribute to that structural design, you and um, Isabel both. Computing how big the rudder surface needs to be in order to equal the, the drag from the pipe. Uh, are you thinking that maybe that needs to be equal or that it should be larger, larger than the force? Because okay. you want it, yeah. 
be able to turn with it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Sounds good. And does that account for like the counterweight that we have? Because that's going to be resisting some of the drag, if I'm not mistaken, right? It does not account, but we can account for it if we want to okay. have that. Right. But I feel like yeah. that, would mean, that would mean we're designing a draggy counterweight, right? Is that what's... That is what we're working on. Are we thinking analyze that in flows, like open VSP stuff, or build it doing, and find out? I already have been doing CFD work for the... Well, okay, um, Ted is here, so we'll be okay. getting around to that. Also, I am planning to do wind tunnel testing with it. It's just blow my list of things to frame. Okay. Um, yeah, we can naturally segue to Ted then, because somewhat hollow or carved in shape would give us the maximum drag. So we did, uh, me and uh, my my team member designed two of these uh, objects. One is a hollow cylinder, but it's not it's not completely hollow. It's just uh, concave in. And there is another uh, another one which is a box. And that is the direction to the street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's like literally like the worst possible shape for drag. <laughs> I'm well, I guess the best shape there are for better. drag, but we ran it in SolidWorks, so the error should accumulate both uh, both ways. So if that's the case, we were trying to match up the drag to see how big of a cross-section and how big of a uh, uh, design material we would need. Um, so you see the dimension for the hollow cylinder. The dimension... Uh, uh, can you back? Yeah. The diameter okay. of 0.13 meters, that kind of design would give us a drag at 13 to 17 newtons. Mm -hmm. The antenna is 14.2 newtons um, from a 40 meter uh, uh, flow velocity. Now you have a lot more drag. You have an equal amount of drag on the wing, and but in the hopes that it's more controllable. Um, or you could have a less controllable plane without that drag element. You could potentially be faster, but more risk of not being able to yeah. fly it right. So, for this mission, is it? Right. Yeah. For this mission, is it uh, just fly three laps, right, in ten minutes? Not as fast as possible. As fast as possible. As fast as possible. So, drag will be eating into it. So, how? <laughs> how boyesque do you feel about? Well, I'm. I still maintain that, like. Uh, control surface deflection also adds drag, uh, but we'll see. Ammeter is three inches, but we can max out to five inches max, depending on the battery shape. But we that's one of the big questions at the moment, because the battery is uh, custom made, so we still don't have a solid picture and idea of what the dimensions are for it. Um, another thing is that the shape of the fuselage is going to be kind of like a rounded square. And right away. We can say that that's too small because the Mission 2 package has to be 3x3 three three and that would completely fill up the I, don't, I personally don't see us gaining maybe 4 inches if we're lucky, but 5 is probably a relatively good number of work. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to convince uh, Michael that that might be annoying to work with just because of experience with Uncle Sam, how Velcro is terrible. Yeah, well, if it's a giant, like, ferromagnetic material. Just like stick it in this. It's gonna have that 3D printed case. We will have a 3D printed case maybe. to make it square though, because we like, need to get up to that. You could maybe incorporate maybe. something into that case so it like locks into the plane. We are thinking like some sort of like rails maybe, but then like I, we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah, but hopefully some sort of rail and latch system where we can like slide it in and it clicks into place. Yeah. That's yeah, what I was honestly, gonna say. Yeah, that's one of the solutions. One of just the sticky pads. Just yeah. treat it like a battery. Yeah. It's not it's not Velcro. These guys need that information like fast now. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it needs to filter to maze and it needs to filter then to structures. So who's working on this exactly in uh... it is Michael, uh, Gary and uh, Alex Santana. Okay. Got it. Cool. You can have a quick talk with all of them over team so yeah it's talking about securing the beam first or not even securing the beam and using um, yeah oh in the stoppers wing locks. inside the wing to hold it which i don't think we should do like the uncle because said. then you have a beam inside your oh. plane sliding around between two points <laughs> set theoretically correct right now with the nominal configuration numbers we've been given um for wing size uh wingspan wing area and coefficient of lift we are okay to take off at about 22 pounds and but there, the um, 
there's always diminishing returns on each of those factors increasing them. Right. I have some graphs in the... Uh, With a 60 foot on the dot takeoff distance or like... 18.2 uh, meters. So it's like just a hair under. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you have to. I, I don't know if you can plan for a headwind into this. So. <laughs> Honestly, until we validate, we can build a structure that's as light as we think we can build it. Yeah. To be honest with you. Okay, so, but we know the dimensions already, so we can figure out the mounting mechanism. Right now, I'm just supporting uh, the testing and see if there's any need between the aero and propulsion team. Today, I start looking at the. The, the longer core proposal and see hmm. how much drag that will affect. Drag goes anywhere from 1.25 to 1.5 times what it was previously. Because uh, reducing the AR is the big, reducing aspect ratio here is the bigger hit right now in my book. If we could figure out a way to increase wing area by also increasing wing span, I'd be a bit more happy. But right now, decreasing the aspect ratio is increasing drag significantly. Do you want to call that open views p uh, yeah. Also, um, other problems is this, basically. If you so remember our big tail problem. Increasing wing area makes the tail worse. Oh, that's well, okay. So then this is going to be a little... Oh, rudder is, yeah, going to be like probably a third. But also, there's been a lot of talk about having kind of like what the yeah, cutouts cut out for. Yeah. Is there like... How much is it going to add? So it's going to give us in length and feet wise. It's going to give us like four inches, right? About. Which is not. I don't. I think based on what you like I showed mean, me, it's not significant, really. Okay. I. Is it? So that's why I'm wondering. If, is, is it worth the? I'd like, say probably like, not. I mean, I'm already talked about. Um, we're going to have part of the vertical stabilizer be detachable anyway, just to try and get the control surface moved back. I won't mind more wing area, but also keep in mind I'd like to either maintain it or fairly increase it to reduce drag and more Triple seven X approach. Folding wing too? Yep. Um, the thing is, if you're folding the wings, that's basically doubling the amount of space they take up in the box. Yep. Long story short, there's not a lot of ways to make it smaller. Um, due, just due to how movement works, you either increase the force or uh, increase the one arm, which is using the fuselage line, um, a tail volume coefficient. Uh, we're looking at 0.66 as uh, anywhere higher than that is going to be looking more and more like a tandem wing aircraft. Well, those are all the variables that I found just based on equations and stuff, but then I also found that we're not going to be changing a lot of those. So there's a separate list of those. Though. So bank angle is already matched from what I've been told. So the only actual thing that I could look at was ways to increase the coefficient of lift. And ways I've found for that is uh, slotted trailing edge flaps, which that seems pretty straightforward. It helps the airflow remain laminar and um, also reduces the boundary layer separation. Leading edge slats, from very recent experience, finding um, research on that is pretty hard. So. I, Pranav offered to give me a contact which might help with that. I mean, I definitely, I have a lot of concerns with our, the, the, the flying characteristics of our plane as the design stands now, so anything we can do to make those less bad would be good. We can, there's, there's some of the things we could increase if we actually end up removing the cord and not like trying to increase the box in that way. We could kind of decrease the box in the other way and then maybe increase fuselage length or increase like the antenna length or something. But still, to get us back to a reasonable wing loading value, we'd have to double wing area pretty much. Looking into it more, it just seemed like it was just getting more and more complicated. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Salviato's going to be really sad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but with that fuselage, we were also talking about incorporating the vertical stabilizer into it. We did like two halves together. Um, not so sure about that, and I kind of want to discuss that more. But that was brought up at last. I think that, yeah, like a sandwich would definitely provide more stiffness than just layers and like the stringer design. And it would also simplify like mounting anything inside the fuselage. The um, standard operating procedure for the CNC hot wire cutter that is now 
in the Google Drive, and I sent out a message to, I think, the shop status, or it was a, a different yeah, chat. Yeah, I saw that. 